In that same chapter, Psalms 37, go to verse 3 through 5. That's where I'm going to stop. Psalms 37, 3 through 5. Then we'll jump to 25. Amen? amen. If you're ready, say amen. amen. If you're not ready, let me hear you say amen. Thank you. That's Psalms 37, starting at the third verse. And the scripture reads as follows. Trust the Lord and do good things. Live in the land and practice being faithful. Be happy with the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Entrust your ways to the Lord. Trust him and he will act on your behalf. Now let's skip to verse 25. I have been young. Now I am old. But I have never seen a righteous person abandoned or his descendants begging for food. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. I should, thank you so much. Like I said, I had to look back a few days ago and see all the pain and heartaches and headaches and as I went through these things, I started looking at myself and saying, you know one thing, you're not paying attention. You're just growing old. That's all it is. And I thought about something while I was putting this sermon together. And I needed a title. So the title, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to give this is down through the years, the Lord sure has been good to me. This old body might be deteriorating, but down through the years, God has been good to me. You see, my brothers and sisters, what we have to realize is that time brings a lot of change in our lives. In Psalms 37, it tells us not to be worried about the success of the wicked, but to trust God who has the power to make our dreams come true. You see, David wrote, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you desires of your heart. Amen? You see, when we're walking with Jesus in a surrendered relationship, our hearts have been purified, by his truth and love. Amen? Amen? Then the desires of our heart will be godly desires. I know, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, when we are walking in close relationship with him, he will inspire us with dreams and desires that are from him. What the psalm teaches us is to commit our ways in life to the Lord, and he will bring our righteous desires to pass only in his time. Mm -hmm. So many times we want God to rush and get it done. Mm -hmm. But our desires he will do for us in his time. In order for us to realize the dreams that God has placed on our hearts, we need to exercise faith, being obedient, and committed to the vision and dreams. You see, God's promises can be fulfilled in us as we obey the law of use. Some of you may ask, what is the law of use? It's a parable of the talents in the book of Matthew 25, 14 through 29. Now, what is that parable? The parable is Jesus taught his disciples that they must use and exercise the gifts that God has given them, or they're going to lose them. All right. God has given each and every one of us gifts. Yes, and if we don't use them for God's greatness, yeah. you're going to lose them. All right. No matter how you look at them. All right. You see, David acknowledged that the Lord would be with us during every stage of our life. 
from the cradle to the grave when he said, I have been young, now I am old. But yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his descendants or offspring begging for food or bread. You see, my brothers and sisters, well, whether we, whether we admit it or not, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second, you and I are growing and old. Aging is a reality that many people try to escape or run away from, you know. That's why you see sometimes, you see these older men trying to look young or act, or act young. You see these older women trying to look and act like young women. They're old, but they dress young. They're old, but they try to talk young. They're old, but they try to behave like they're young. You see, there ain't nothing wrong with wanting to keep alive the memories of our younger days when we had plenty of bigger and energy. All right. okay. But what you have to understand here is sooner or later, Father Time and Mother Nature, they're going to catch up with us. Yeah. And we have to say, like that old spiritual song my grandmother used to say, that old gray bear just ain't what he used to. <laughs> <laughs> you see, my brothers and sisters, 50 years ago, <laughs> you see, 50 years ago, when I was in Burke High School in Charleston, South Carolina, I remember being one of the three great halfbacks playing football that I was on it for. I remember a time that I could have run track and I was on it for a couple of runs. You know, sometimes I go home and I see my old friends. And I see one of my old coaches and we reminisce about them days. But when I come back to reality, I have to realize that that old great man ain't what he used to be. Amen? See, it memorizes me when I see people who refuse to accept that old age. You see, it's obvious from lines in our faces and the wrinkles on our foreheads that that player or play at days, I'm sorry to say that they over. Right. Your player days are gone. Yes, Your play at days are gone. Yes, Amen. Yes, but you see, you can't tell them they're not in the game any longer. Because they're still trying to convince young girls and young boys that they still have the juice and still got it going on. You see, I'm going to tell you what my feelings about that is. If you're going out of business, you ought to take down the sign. <laughs> you see, there ain't no sense in trying to keep up with the younger generation. There's no sense in trying to keep the business open if your merchandise is stale and out of date. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Somebody hear me in You see, aging and old age is a natural profession in life. Amen? I see some people listening to me. You see, I don't care how many vitamins you take or how well you watch your diet or how much exercise you can't stop yourself from getting old. And you got these people out here telling you, come to Jenny Craig. We got these vitality. Oh, come on. Yeah. See, Jenny Craig making money off of you. But your body telling you, I can't do this no more. <laughs> but you want to try to still be young and hip and that. You see, old age is going to bring about changes. Yeah. You see, they used to call us young man and young lady in the day. But now they ain't calling you grandpa or papa. <laughs> Grandma, granny, or my dear. You used to be able to stay up all night. Now you have to take a nap after lunch. <laughs> you used to be able to run like a deer. Now you move like a snail. I ain't going to lie about it. You used to be able to eat anything um, that your little heart desires.
it without fear and ingestion. But now when you eat, you have to stay up a while and just to let it digest. Ask me, I don't mind some ice cream. Amen. You, you used to never have to take any kind of medication, but now you have to take a pill for just about everything. You see, you gotta take a pill to make the pill you just took go down like right. You gotta take a pill to put you to sleep. Then when you get up in the morning, you gotta take another pill to keep you awake. Amen. You see, you're getting old. Things change. People change. Your body change. But one thing that David reminds us of, that one thing is God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you look back over your life, you, re you recognize that down through the years, God has been good to me. to say amen. amen. You might be getting old, yeah. but God has been good to you. Amen. In this 37 Psalms, first of all, David speaks of God's goodness in the past tense of his life. What he says is this, I've been young. In other words, God was good to me when I was a young boy. In other words, the places I went that I could have been killed in because I was young and foolish and yeah. didn't see the danger that lurked in them nightclubs, them juke joints uh, at the party. But guess what? God has been good to me. Yeah. The stuff that I drank, yeah. smoked, and could have could have poisoned me, yeah. but because I was young and everything else I was doing, I didn't see the danger. But still yet, God has been good to me. All right. All right. All right. The people I hung out with, yes, some of whom meant me no good, on, but were my best friends because at the time I had a little something, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bling bling. But because I was young and didn't realize that as long as you have something, your friends, they're going to hang around you for anything you got. But when the time comes and the ship starts to sink, they're just like rocks on the ship. They're jumping up because they don't want to get drunk. You don't see him anymore. Yes, sir. But yet still, during all that time, God has been with him. Yes, yes, Somebody need to say amen to that. Don't y'all sit down there like y'all didn't know what I'm talking about. Yes, You're with me. I can look at you and tell. Some of you sitting there talking about <laughs> <laughs> I can see you sitting behind your seat. But God still yet has been good to you. Yes, Somebody yes, need to say amen. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. David not only talked about the past tense of his life, yeah. but he talked about the present tense also. Mm -hmm. You see, David said, not only am I no longer young, but I am old. Yes, sir. You see, my hair has turned white. Yeah. My eyesight has gotten dim. Yeah. Which is true. Yes, my steps have drawn short. Yeah. But guess what? Through all that, God is still keeping me. Somebody here today, who knows that God is keeping you. Look at your friend next to you and say, you know what? God is keeping me. Don't be shy. Tell somebody. Tell your next door neighbor that God has been keeping me. And you see, when you know that God is keeping you, you can't help but have a powerful testimony. You see, it amazes me how some folk come to church, give God all the praise and glory, but an obvious that the Lord is keeping him, and they can't give God some praise. Amen? Amen. Who do you think woke you up this morning? Yes, Who do you think started you on your way? Yes, you see, my brothers and sisters, you might have cancer, but God is good. Yes, you might have a bad heart, but God is good. Yes, you might have high blood pressure, but God is good. Yes, you might be a diabetic, yes, but God is good. Yes, you might have sickle cell anemia, but God is good. Yes, you might be broke and don't have a dime in it, but God is good. You might be blind, crippled, cross-eyed, or be crazy, but guess what? God is still good. You see, when you know God is good, you can't help but say like David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Know his seat. Thank you for love. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. You see, but David is David's not trying to say I've never been hungry in my life. He's not trying to 
say I've never been in trouble in my life. Mm -hmm. You see, we all have been to that point yeah, yeah. where we get in trouble and have needs for help. Mm -hmm. You see, David's not saying there weren't any times in life when he didn't need somebody to help him. We all need a little help every now and then. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, David's not saying there were no times in his life when he didn't have to borrow money from a friend till he got paid. Mm -hmm. Amen? You see, but David said, even though through all of that, I never had a moment in my life that God didn't take care of me. Yeah. Somebody yeah. needs to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. I need to stop sitting like this. Because yeah. God has been taking care of you. Yeah. And you know what, thing? In his statement, he said, I never had a moment. You know, never is a pretty strong word. Mm -hmm. Never is a pretty strong word. Never means there's absolutely no question about it. Never means there's never been no evidence of anything else that would be bad for me. All right. You see, All right. he says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for what? Break. My brothers and sisters, God is truly Jehovah Jehovah. Yeah. He is a God that will provide for all your needs. Yeah. You know, my mama used to say something when I was a young boy, and I didn't understand it until I grew up in age. What she used to tell me is, he may not come when you want him to come, but guess what? When he comes, he's going to be right on time. Amen. You see, I used to remember them times when I used to want certain things. God, I, I can't pay this bill this week. God, oh, this is happening to me. God, why are you letting this? But when I backed away and I let him take control, guess what? He was right on time. Somebody need to say amen. Somebody need to say amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that if you can think of any reason to acknowledge how God, how good God is to you, you need to think about this. You see, God forgave us of our sins through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. We were no good. I'm going to say that again. We were no good, but the God, but God the Father sent his son, who was good, to pay the price for your sins and mine. That's something to think about. And because of the goodness of Jesus, those who accept him when they die of old age simply move from an early level of God's goodness to a heavenly level of God's goodness. Oh, I need to say amen in here. If it were not for the fact that God is good, you and I would not have the chance to, get, to go live with God when we die. But glory be to God, he forgives us through the blood of his only begotten. And I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. That even though I'm getting old, down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Amen? You know, I can illustrate what I mean today. Let me tell you a little story here. I remember this young man who was a very rebellious young man. This boy disobeyed his parents, ended up on the wrong side of the law. The law he broke sent him to prison for eight years. He knew that his parents were hurt and embarrassed by his foolishness. As he sat those eight years in prison, he thought about his mother and father and looked forward to the day when he could go home. You see, as time passed, he didn't know if his father would let him come home. Because every time he wrote a letter to his father, he would never get an answer. So he wrote a letter to his mother and said, Mom, in a few days I'm going to be released from prison. I'm going to take the train that comes by the family farm. If you and Dad have forgiven me and given me a new chance, I'd like you to tie a yellow ribbon on the oak tree that runs beside the red oak tree. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. oh thank you. As I'm on the train, if I see the, the tree, and I know that I can jump off that train if I see that yellow ribbon, that I've been forgiven. Yes, sir. But at the same time, if I don't see that yellow ribbon, I've embarrassed you so bad that I'll stay on that train. I'll never come home again, and you'll never hear from me again. All right. Well, the day came when they released him from jail. He walked to the train station and bought him a ticket and got on that old train. With every turn of the wheels on the locomotive, his tension mounted, wondering if that piece of ribbon was going to be on that train. As the train rounded the bend, 
that led to the family's farm, he couldn't stand to look. So he asked the man sitting across from him, Sir, would you mind coming to the window and look out the window to see if a yellow ribbon is tied around an old tree while we go around this bed? It's my family's farm, and I want to know if there's a ribbon on that tree. The man said, yes, I'll do it for you, son. And as the train came to the farm, the boy said, do you see a ribbon? The man said, no, I don't see a ribbon. All right. I see hundreds of ribbons. <laughs> Some tied on every branch of that tree. I see ribbon tied on clothesline. I see ribbon tied on rose bushes. There are ribbon tied down the fence to your father's property. There are even ribbons tied to the scarecrow. They show so many ribbons that look like a snow ribbon. The man asked the young boy, what does it mean? The boy jumped off the train and said it means I'm forgiven. There's a new beginning with my mother and father. Somebody needs to think about that. If God forgives us for the way we are, then we need to start forgiving each other. We need to start forgiving each other. We need to forgive each other about what has happened in our past life because if you're sitting here this morning, down through the years, the Lord has been good. The Lord has been good. I'm going to close now. But I just want to tell you one more thing. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love forgives. And if you can think of any other reason to tell God thank you this morning, you need to tell him. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for all that you've done for me, Jesus. Thank you for making a way out of nowhere. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I wish I had somebody in here today who would tell somebody, I know the Lord's been good to me. I wish I had somebody today to tell somebody that down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Amen? Amen. God bless you, my brothers